Hi guys and welcome to my kitchen where we will be making freezer meals for the next three weeks in hopefully three hours. Today I am very, very optimistic that we can do this. So far we have made freezer meals mostly for a month, enough for a month. And then we did one for two weeks and then we did another one for, for one week. And now we're doing one for three weeks. Yes, and on and on it goes. I am so excited that you are here because... I have amazing recipes in store for us today and I always just love hanging out. So welcome. So today we started quite a bit earlier uh, so that most of the ingredients have been prepped. I have boiled my lentils. I have prepared together with the help of my amazing help we've prepared most of the ingredients just a few are remaining she's filled most of them so mine is just to use the food processor to finish that process and then now we can start cooking So some of the uh, recipes that I have today, I want to make some beans with bacon. It's been a while since we had some red beans with bacon. Then also I have some lentils, which you remember we said they go amazingly with, with chapati. And then I have some chicken that I need to marinate. I have some beef. I'm making some uh, spaghetti meat sauce. Oh my gosh. Awesome things, awesome things. The first thing I want to do is to put this minced meat in a pot so that it can it can cook and dry out and cool down before I have to put it in the freezer box. By the way, today let me tell you, I am making the easiest, the easiest, easiest, easiest recipes ever because one, I am tired and two, I only want this to be over in like three hours or so. So one of the hacks that I'm going to use is I'm going to marinate all of my meats. I'm not going to cook any meat dish to, to, to the end. I just want to marinate it and put it in freezer bags and then we're going to cook it on the day off. Another thing that I want to do, I'm so excited because a lot of you guys have been suggesting this, is that when it comes to my, especially my vegetarian dishes, I cook one base for everything and then I divide and then continue to make the, to differentiate the rest later, as you will see. So for the vegetarian dishes, I'm going to cook just Everything in one pot, like the onions, the tomatoes, the ginger, the garlic, and all that. And then I'm going to divide. You will see. You wait. Whoever came up with this idea, please let me know down, down below that. Yes, that was my idea because it is brilliant. Once the minced, minced meat is drying off, by the way, I haven't put anything in it. I haven't put any spices or nothing. Then I want to start cooking the base, as I said, of the vegetarian dishes. So the thing that is going to differentiate these dishes will be the spices that I put after I have managed to separate what is common amongst them. So yeah, for starters, I want to cook in some coconut oil because you guys, there is nothing better than lentils that taste like coconut. Please let me know if there's anything better. 
and then yeah just go ahead and cook the onions in it and then the garlic and ginger and all those activities and then after that uh separate and yani you wait and see how easy this is going to be so once i have separated the base because as you can see, it has onions, it has tomatoes, it has garlic and ginger and tomato paste. That is common to everything that I'll be cooking today. And then once I've separated them, then I put different spices to just make them taste different. So that you're not having meals that taste the same over and over and over. The dagos taste like the beans taste like the lentils taste like, you know, the on and on it goes. So the beans really help to differentiate these dishes. And yeah... Try it. Let me know if it's something that you'd be willing to try in your home. You guys, this beef stew is so easy to make. Oh my gosh, I think this is going to be my go-to recipe. Now, what I do is... Uh, <clears throat> as you can see, we've already prepared all the ingredients. I've even boiled the peas and everything. Because, you know, I'm from the mountains, so my ve my beef stew has to have peas and carrots. I'm this short of putting in my rules, but, you know, <laughs> I'm a peace-loving Kenyan. So now, uh, I put the all the bases of the of the beef into the bag first i'm using ziplock bags okay so i put one cup of onions and then some garlic and ginger paste of course as usual then some carrots and then our beef and then i pour in some soy sauce some spices everything that i wanted to to have okay and voila i'm done so what will happen on the day of cooking is i will remove let it thaw overnight in my fridge or whatever and then dunk it in my pot Use an instant pot or pressure cooker and it will go like way faster. Add one cup of water or even if you're using a normal sophuria, add one cup of water, cover and let it cook for at least an hour if you, if you don't have a pressure cooker. Now, uh, at the end of it all, it's going to taste very different because, um, because of all the amazing spices that I have put. And then it's not going to be so watery once I've made it because then I'm going to add some cornstarch slurry. I've actually done this at the end of the video, so stay tuned. You'll see how exactly it comes out. So for the chicken, it is basically what we have always done. You guys, this is not the first time we're doing this. Just put your chicken in a bag, put whatever spices you had fancies, put some lemon juice or some ginger, shake, 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 and then freeze it. Then on that day, just store it overnight and roast it in the fridge at 375 Fahrenheit or an 80 centigrade for approximately, I'd say 45 minutes, flipping in the middle. And boom, bam, boom, you are roasted chicken. Is done. We love to have it with ugali and oh my gosh, tasty.
Okay, a girl needs some coffee. And yes, it's decaf coffee, but still, it's picking me up because I, oh my gosh, tired a bit. I'm feeling like the ninja, the OG ninja, up to the point where I've decided I need to wash a few of these dishes because everything has gone so, so, so well. This is officially the fastest freezer meal cooking session I've had in a while. And you guys know I like to clean as I go. So, yeah. The last thing I want to make is this minced meat. It's basically a minced beef spaghetti sauce. And I waited for it to cool down. That's why I decided to wash the dishes and do everything else. Because I want to also put it in Ziploc bags and put it in the freezer. And of course you can't put warm things in the freezer. But there is a tip for you when you are arranging your food in your freezer. Especially if you've just batch cooked. And I'm going to show you how all this is going to look once it is batch cooked, you guys. Oh my gosh, looking so good. And also how we make the beef stew. But when you're arranging food in your freezer, you need to make sure that you don't put all of the food that you have cooked into your freezer. Otherwise, it is going to lower the temperature, I mean, to increase the temperature of the freezer. And that might endanger the food you already have in there. So you put it in batches, like you put a third, close your freezer, wait for a few couple of hours, then put the other third, then the last third. I hope that makes sense. And I'm done. Look at this. Beautiful. Yes, you guys, I'm checking an album very soon. Oh my gosh, how awesome is this? Peace out, guys. Okay, I'm just kidding. I have to put it in the freezer right now. And then I will go to sleep. Call it a day. I wait for my food to cool down. So, it is a few days later and I just picked one of the meals that we made in the batch cooking session to show you how we are going to have it. And so, we are having this amazingly delicious beef stew recipe with some dinner rolls. I had planned to make a salad, but man, man plans, but you know what the Bible says, it is the Lord's will that prevails because... I did not end up making the salad, so we're just having some amazing dinner rolls and this beef stew recipe.
for the dinner rolls. You guys, imagine I was looking for recipes to make individual dinner rolls. But I ended up making this same milk bread that we love so, 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 so much. I don't know why now they're calling it a dinner roll. Oh my gosh, you guys, you know we've been through this. If you want to see a step-by-step -step instruction on how, on how we made this one, I'll link the video right here. So I'm making the beef, the dinner roll so that we can have it with the beef and call it a doy. Alright, for this beef stew, I decided to show you so that you can understand exactly how to go about making it, okay? So, remove it from your freezer, uh, hopefully and preferably the night before, then let it thaw gently in your oven. But if you forget, it is still okay because remember we are cooking it on the instant pot or on your pressure cooker and or on your stove top so it's going to cook very quickly all right so once you remove it from your freezer and it has thawed or not thawed depending on your situation put it in whatever contraption you'll be cooking it in add one and a half cups of water and cover if you're using a pressure cooker or any sun pot like me add cover it and cook it for 30 minutes you guys just 30 minutes is enough I really love the way you just dump this beef into a pot cover and go and come back after 30 minutes for, for a delicious meal. And then remember, once it has cooked and boiled nicely, when you're removing it from your, when it's, when you're ready and you're sure that it has cooked, you're going to take some little bit of water, maybe half a cup and two tablespoons of cornstarch, mix nicely and pour it in to thicken it up. Now you cannot freeze meals that have been made with cornstarch slurries or cornstarch whatever because it tends to separate when it is in the freezer so that's why we're doing it on the last day but first of course is to set the table and we had washed our table mat so i need to go ahead and hang it and remember if you're interested on where to get these amazing table mats i will link them down below And it is time to eat. I hope you notice how we put the cornstarch slurry in our beef stew. And also if you have some dania, now would be the time to add it. And then we eat, 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 eat. Oh my gosh, you guys. This food was so delicious. You guy.
this beef slapped to quote <laughs> to quote what the influencers and the young guys say oh my gosh first of all i haven't done a meal where i've had my kids ask for seconds but they did so much then even the rolls my gosh you guys these kids ate like two and a half to three pieces of this roll thank god i've done many of them they love them so 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 much i loved everything 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 about this batch cooking and this beef stew is so amazing i loved it and yeah i love you for spending this time with me if you have enjoyed this content give us a thumbs up remember to subscribe watch another video on this channel and i will see you over there bye